Hello everybody, my name is Josh and welcome to the next LP on the channel. We are continuing on in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise right now, going into Sonic the Hedgehog CD. One of the somewhat maybe considered the odd one out in the series overall. It's an interesting game and I'm excited to share the game with you all right now. So, we have right here the 2011 remake of the game created by Christian Whitehead, probably more well known now as being the developer behind uh, Sonic Mania, which is, you know, the big new classic Sonic game that they came out with, you know, just a few years ago to be nice and stuff. So, we have a very interesting game on our hands right here, um, but there are a few things that I want to talk about before we jump into it here. Um, we'll talk about some of this stuff in the extras menu, but I do want to talk about a few things before we jump into the game, and that is on the settings menu here. Uh, Sonic CD is interesting, it has a different version of the Spin Dash, and we're going to be using the CD version of the Spin Dash for this playthrough, however, it is there, um, and we will explain the differences between the two when we jump into the game itself. One other thing that Sonic CD has is that it has two soundtracks, uh, the Japanese soundtrack and the US soundtrack. Um, for the purposes of this playthrough, we are going to be using the Japanese soundtrack. Um, but there is a US soundtrack and I might show off the US soundtrack in a quickfire version or in a possible second playthrough of the game, as there is another playthrough of the game. But for all intents and purposes, we are going to be jumping in here into Sonic CD. This is the remake, however, pretty much everything that the game applies will be applied to all versions of the game. Um, we've just got more modern-ish menus here for the remake. Um, and the remake also allows you to play as Tails, however, to play as Tails, we need to unlock him. So, we're gonna need to sit down and find some time to do that. So we're gonna jump in with Sonic right here, sit back, relax, and enjoy the opening movie for Sonic CD right after I hit Sonic here. And we will jump into the game right after. But first, the intro song and the intro movie. This game was released on the Mega CD, so being the Mega CD, it had the ability to play full motion uh, somewhat video. And because this is the remaster slash remake, well, this is probably the best you're gonna ever see this video right here. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the opening video. Alright, so, a bit unfortunate there that uh, the lyrics for the Japanese and European opening theme are not, unfortunately, in the remake. Um, an interesting case in that, uh, interesting case there. I'm not completely sure why the lyrics aren't 
there the instrumental is, and some of the, like, very small rappy bits are there, but, you know, the actual game itself, the, the actual song doesn't have lyrics. Which is odd, because if you're using the American soundtrack, Sonic Boom does have its lyrics there. Um, so, I don't know, it's just a bit interesting that um, they the lyrics are removed in this version. Anyway, Sonic CD is interesting. We have, for what seems like a relatively normal classic Sonic adventure, at least to begin with, um, there's some interesting things in this game. Um, first off, Sonic has a couple of new moves. Uh, the main new move here is called the Super Peel Out. If you hold up on the D-pad and press the run button, you will uh, launch off in a super peel out way. The spin dash is also in this game, but it works a little bit differently compared to how it works in Sonic 2. Um, you can't release it immediately like you could in Sonic 2. You have to hold it for a moment and then let go. If you try releasing it immediately, this happens. So it needs to charge up a little bit. However, that is not everything that Sonic CD is about. The big thing in Sonic CD is, of course, the time travel element. Throughout all the stages, you will see posts like this. Some say future, and some say past. If you grab one of them, you'll be given that ability, and you now need to make your way to the future. And if you manage to hold the speed long enough, you'll be able to travel to that time period. In the case of here, we start every level in the future, in the present, sorry, not the future, the present. And you will, you can travel to either the past or the future. Now there are four different time travel periods that you can get to. And if you want to focus on the game itself, you want to be trying to get into the past so that you can destroy the robot generator in every level. Every level has a robot generator, and it is one of two ways to get the good ending for the game. Uh, the other way to get the good ending, we will find out very, very shortly. But Sonic CD, at the end of the day, it ends up being more exploration-based then, compared to Sonic 1, which was a bit platformer-based, and Sonic 2, which was very much speed-based. So, now that we've gotten that, and we beat this level here, we'll be able to create a good future. But we have also gained... We've also gained 50 rings in the level itself. So... We have also unlocked the special stage, which is the other way to get a good ending in this game. So here are Sonic CD's special stages. As I said, they are encountered by getting 50 rings in a stage. And... Going into the level... And your goal in these levels is to destroy all the uh, UFOs. It is kind of a messy level to try and do. They're not particularly easy. Um, I find these special stages really annoying. Um, at this point, I usually have more than two of the UFOs defeated. Um, this one in the corner here is very annoying. Um, if your timer, you've got a time limit at the top of the level here. Um, if that timer drops below 30 seconds, another UFO will appear in the middle of the stage, which you can... Which you can destroy to get more time. 20 seconds, I mean, maybe. Yeah. So if we just come over here and destroy this one, you'll gain some extra time. Um, and if you destroy all of them, destroy all the UFOs, you will be able to grab a time stone. There are seven time stones. And you get the seven time stones, then you'll be able to successfully get a point of the game. Now, so pretty much, as I said, there's two ways to get the good ending, and that is to collect all the time stones or destroy all the robot generators in every stage of the game. There are every zone because they don't call them acts for some reason. Zone um, has a few places where you could feasibly travel through time. You want to grab a past. If you go to the future, before you have destroyed 
the robot generator, you will go to a bad future, which is generally not the situation which you want to be in. Uh, bad futures are easily the worst points. And you want to find the point where you can feasibly travel through time to easily get the good future. Now. Finding the time areas is fun. That's that's the fun part of the game. So there's only a few places where you could feasibly get it. And here is one of them. That's probably the best place to get the uh, encounter because in this level especially the the robot generator is right there. So nice easy one to grab right there. If you get both robot generators in the zone or the act I guess, Palm Tree Panic being the first level which is very much a uh, Green Hill Zone XP. You'll find that a lot of stages in this game uh, are a lot like stages that were in Sonic 1. Um, they feel a lot like stages that were in Sonic 1. Um, Palm Tree Panic is obviously Green Hill Zone based. Um, there's a couple other levels that are really obvious Sonic 1 XPs. Um, but if you make a good future in both the first and second zone or act, in a stage, um, you will be a you will get a good future for that zone, and you will fight the boss of the zone in the good future. Now the boss has its own act. The boss has its own act. The boss is entirely relegated to that act. You don't have to defeat a level first. You just have to focus on defeating the defeating the boss. Now, the hardest part of doing these special stages is that if you run on the water, your your time limit will fall down drastically. Um, so the time limit usually goes down by like a second every now and then. Um, if you are running on the water though, it will go down very, very quickly. So with two time, time stones in hand, I'm not going to focus on trying to get all the time stones. Um, we're just going to focus on defeating the boss here and finishing off zone 1 of the game, Palm Tree Panic. So we are in a good future here in Palm Tree Panic. If we did not get the robot generators in the first two levels, we would not have a good future here. We would have a bad future, um, which I'll show off in a bonus level at the very end, bonus episode at the end of this series. Um, you just got to make your way through the short level, grabbing some rings uh, to encounter the boss of the zone. Which will be Eggman. This Eggman boss is really, really easy. We have one already. Would you look at that? That was pathetic. Yes, so this Eggman boss... The Eggman bosses in this game are very interesting. Uh, they are a bit more unorthodox than the usual bosses that you would find in Sonic 1 and Sonic 2. Um, and the first one is very easy, but the later ones will not be as easy. The next zone in particular has a particularly interesting boss to deal with. With that being said, as we load into Collision Chaos here, we are done for the first episode of this, of this series. So, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. It will be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you'd like. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to, and you can always unsubscribe later on. It is entirely up to you. We'll see you all for part two, where we will tackle Collision Chaos and meet a couple new characters that Sonic City introduced to the franchise. So, I will see you all then. Until next time, my name is Big Josh. Until next time, my name is Big Josh. Ciao, and I will see you all in the next episode.